And Coach, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good to be with you guys. Hey, I was mentioning uh, just a moment ago that it kind of feels strange with you not being in studio. I, I don't I don't know if I like this, but but we're happy that you're joining us. But, you know, when, when you have the presence of a president coach in studio, there's just something about that. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you know, I miss you too. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> All right, Coach, last night, BYU basketball's final non-conference game uh, against a, a pretty good Cal State Bakersfield team. The Roadrunners are not well-known, perhaps underrated. BYU finds a way to win 81-71. What was the best thing you saw from BYU in their last non-conference game last night? You know, a, a couple of things. One, I think I heard you just briefly talking a little bit about Yoli Childs and uh, how he's taking his game to another level and really making a difference on the floor. I think... BYU took what was there for them, and Bakersfield played at such a frantic pace and uh, not, not the greatest shot selection at times, especially in the first half. So many long rebounds, and it kind of ignited BYU's attack, and it got BYU back into that pace that they love and that they're comfortable playing. And, and, and then to see the bigs run the floor, uh, all of the bigs ran the floor, it just put Bakersfield into a deep hole early on in that game. And, and, and Bakersfield has a lot – playing themselves just with the shot selection and that. But I felt like they took advantage of what Bakersfield is athletic. They were quick, um, but they shot themselves in the foot by just really, really poor shot selection. Uh, and so I love the fact that BYU didn't – there were times they had open threes. They got it to the rack. They shot 50 – I think 59% in the first half and uh, really took it to them and took what was there for them. And uh, those were some of the things that I thought that really stood out to me as I watched that game. With last night being the final non-conference game, we're, we're kind of looking back and, and seeing how BYU did overall. They're nine and four. You know, we thought maybe BYU would be ten and three at this at this point heading into conference play. So they're just one off there. Where is BYU basketball's progress right now compared to where maybe you expected them to be heading into WCC play? I think offensively, they have a much better understanding of who they are and how they're going to play. And we've talked about this on the show a number of times, but. BYU understands that they're going to play inside out. That's not to say they're not going to run and play with pace and take the shots when they're there, but I think collectively they have learned how to score in the inside-out attack. I think defensively, two things, there's two things that are, are still they're kind of vulnerable with. Middle penetration, which we've talked a lot about, and they're going to have to continue to get better at that because any time, even last night in the second half against Bakersfield, they got into the paint and got shots. And then I think the second thing, is that guards, the guards are chasing. As they chase their, their offensive player for off of screens, there's always separation, which allows shooter, good shooters to get good, you know, open shots. So I think there's a concern there. I think the other thing defensively, though, and we, we'll bring Yoli Childs into this mix, playing him at the four, it makes BYU so much better against ball screens because he can switch everything. I mean, he can guard perimeter players. He has such length. He doesn't have to get up into them. He can get extended. That makes BYU better. That's something I didn't see happening, because I didn't think he'd be playing the role he had. But with Davis Hurt, he actually makes better. He makes them better with his ability to rebound out of his area and also being able to defend uh, guards as they come off of ball screens. And it's just so much that it just makes teams uncomfortable when your bigs can take your guards and there's an easy, smooth transition. We mentioned that Yoli Childs is averaging a double-double since he's been inserted into the starting lineup, 10.7 points, 10.5 rebounds a game. You think he has the highest ceiling of any BYU player overall. What's his ceiling this year as a freshman? Well, he's taken advantage of an opportunity. And Kyle Davis is a seasoned veteran. He's hurt, and so – there would have been less minutes for Yoli. I think he was always going to be in the mix. But now all of a sudden when he's going to play 25 to 30 minutes a game, uh, it just I think confidence is, is the most important thing, especially for young players. They're, they're going to make mistakes. I mean, look at his stat line last night. He's 6 from 8 from the field goal, 7 for 13 free throws, which is an improvement, 12 rebounds, 4 blocks, and assists. He's kind of filled the stat sheet. That means he's active, he's moving, uh, he's attentive, and the more he does that, the next game he plays, he has that much more confidence. And that's the hardest thing for young players to get is to get confidence because you, to get confidence, you've got to be on the floor. Now that he's getting that, 
his upside is significant, even this year. Uh, I mean, he hit some shots last night, little eight to ten footers, and I had not seen him ever even take, and it went down. And again, oftentimes it's not so much about technique; it's just in your mindset is I'm gonna knock this shot down. I can do this, and that's kind of where he's at. Steve Cleveland joining us on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline. Knowing what awaits BYU in the WCC, I mean, obviously, once again, it's a top-heavy league. How prepared do you believe BYU is heading into conference play? I think there's been enough attention by the coaching staff to have enough discussions about the importance of the things defensively they need to be better at. But number two, is that they have to play the same way when they play Portland as when they play Gonzaga. And obviously talent will be different, and there will be more opportunities, but don't get away from what, who you are. And I think sometimes, when, for instance, last night, the game got so quick and so much pace, and by the second half, BYU was shooting the ball so much quicker and now, all of a sudden, Durham starts hitting shots from 26, 27, 28 feet. We're talking about an eight- or nine-point game with three or four minutes to go, a game that they had never been in the game. And so I think when you, you get big leads, don't get away from the inside out. Now, the fact that Mika was off the floor a lot, uh, there's two things. One, it takes away that inside attack like they would like to have it. And number two, it kind of ignites T.J., and, and Nick, I mean, they're, they're way more assertive and aggressive in transition. They just have to find that balance no matter who they play. This league, this league might be a little bit better at the bottom. I mean, last night, USF beats Utah, even though Kyle Kuzma, their leading scorer rebounder, went down in the first minute. But still, the fact in a neutral court that USF could beat Utah, I don't know what that says about USF or Utah, but I think that's a good win for the WCC. And then Santa Clara beats Valpo on the road. <laughs> in double overtime and Jared Boundary, uh, who was averaging about 19 a game. I think had 30 last night. So, and that wasn't like Valpo played bad. Peters had 35 and Hammock had 25. So those are two really good wins. What you would consider maybe this, the bottom half of this conference. So I think you're going to, everyone's going to have to be really aware of who they play and, and stay true to, to what the principles are that you, you've used to get you to this point. Former head basketball coach at BYU, Steve Cleveland, now BYU TV basketball analyst with us on BYU Sports Nation. Follow him at Coach Cleve 22 When you look at what BYU wants to do year in and year out, and that is specifically win a conference championship and make a trip to the NCAA tournament, let's just focus on the latter of those two, Steve. What does BYU have to do in conference to solidify – an at-large spot in the NCAA tournament? Because everybody's saying, well, if it's a three-bid league, BYU is going to have to be the team that gets in. How do they do that in conference play? They went out at home, I think, to start with. And, uh, you know, they've had success at Gonzaga and then get beat at home. I think you, you take great pride. In, and, and I know Coach Rose, and I know when I was there, there were times when there was 30, 40, 45 game winning streaks at home. And I that's something like, you know, we just take care of business at home. And I think you take pride in that as a program that we don't lose at home. So, number one, if they don't lose at home and then they go out and beat the people they're supposed to beat on the road, then I think it puts them in a situation where they've beaten two probably top 25 teams. I mean, Gonzaga, by the time we, time BYU plays them, um, more than likely could be in the top five or six or seven in the country. Yeah. Um, so you got two ranked teams in the conference. Both, you know, getting a win over both of those clubs and then maybe getting to the finals or winning, you know, obviously if you win the, the WCC tournament, you're in automatically, but a good showing there. I, I believe they've got to beat both of those teams at least once and they can't have bad losses at home. Coach, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, in closing, ask you our Twitter question. If you could pick any Christmas gift to give your favorite BYU team athlete or coach, what would it be? I think uh, my Christmas gift would be a healthy Elijah Bryant. Mm. And uh, I think that he, he is a piece there that is going to make a difference. And if he's healthy, I mean, we look back a couple months ago, and he was the projected starting point guard. And it's not to say that LJ and Tyler haven't done a great job in their own way. In fact, I love what Tyler's doing with his probing and attacking. He's just off, off the bounce. He's really good passing the ball. But I think Elijah Bryant is a piece that if he's there and he's healthy, 
makes BYU a lot better. And I think that'd be a great Christmas gift for Coach Rose and that entire team. Coach Rose, thanks you. Somewhere he he's <laughs> his ears are perked up. <laughs> Merry Christmas to President hey, Coach Merry Steve Christmas Cleveland. Thanks for the time.